Hey, what's up, Yoon fam? It is your boy, Mark Yoon, and I'm bringing another exciting video today. So what I got for you today is our community video. That's right, is our Friday community video, which means that we're gonna go over my favorite comments from this week. And remember, if your comments did not make it, please keep plugging away. I try to only choose about five or six from each video throughout the week. Um, just ones that stand out and stuff. If yours doesn't show up, uh, it's not because I didn't like your comment or anything like that. It's usually just because um, maybe I saw someone was repeating similar things to what you were saying, and uh, I just wanted to get like one uh, point across. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna jump right into the video. So the first video that we're gonna be covering is from my uh, my Setsuka videos from the week, and uh, we're gonna start with Terrence Sprouse, who says, "Great video, G." Smiley face with shades. On the DLC review, I also would have given it an 8 out of 10. Do you think Huang will have a co classic costume as well, like they gave Setsuka? That's a good question, Terrence. I'm hoping that they do, because I actually do like his kind of Chinese key pow with the, the circular emblem on the front of it. Um, I actually kind of dig his classic look, so I do suspect that they would probably bring it back, because I can't see them revamping uh, a legacy character from Soul Edge without doing that. SolarFlight95 says, I'm going to parrot everyone else on here. The creation parts are average, though a vast improvement over the last one in my opinion. I'm happy to have my werewolf head back, though also I wouldn't mind, I don't mind the Tekken costumes. They were unneeded in my opinion, and Hayashi's mustache being an accessory did get a hearty chuckle out of me though. Yeah, as we'll see a lot, a lot of people like do actually like the Tekken costumes, but wish that other characters were represented in the game except for the ones that they chose. To be honest, I don't understand why they chose, like, Josie and some of the other characters as, like, members. Heiachi, I can understand. Uh, even Asuka to a, to a point, but characters like, I don't know, Huarong or even Jin or Kazuya are, like, greatly missed from this. Caliber75, the gamer, says, First, let me say thank you for the shout-out. Really appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. These have been great videos as of lately. For the score for me, I would give it a, the DLC 1112 pack a 8.5. Setsuka's story mode and her style in Master of Souls is extra replay value. Um, yep, with every DLC pack we also get, not only do we get extra content for a creative character, but Libra gets a new style that we can master to unlock the new um, master that you go up against the Ancient. So uh, all of that replay value is really awesome in my opinion. Buttery Goodness Incorporated says, I think it's time to make Create a Soul packs separate from Seasons. While still having packs within the Seasons, themed ones outside of the additional DLC wouldn't be a bad move. Some packs from 5 are completely absent, some pieces are missing like the White Knight's helmet, and there's obviously space for weapons like Soul Edge and Soul Calibur themed weapons. Joke weapons with sound effects, option to turn them off in the settings, classic costumes, even remade pieces from Soul Calibur 3 that never came back like the Spectre's Hood. I just want to feel feel like this is a complete game. Even more modes added. Wasn't that talked about a while ago? Um, the, to your first question, I want to say that would be an option for them to do, but they don't really have the budgetary constraints to actually make separate complete packs like that. A lot of their focus right now is porting over stuff from Soul Calibur 4 and 5 that isn't in the game yet. Um, with every DLC set that we get, there's very limited or very new... Uh, not as many new pieces. It's all basically just ports from 4 and 5 at this point But um, if they did do that and separate the pack separately from the season pass That would mean that they can actually charge an additional cost because it wouldn't be covered within the season itself Meaning that if we do purchase the season pass They might be able to charge us for, like extra money for additional packs, which I wouldn't be a fan of I think a one-time season pass is fine and you should get everything within that season some game companies do that, and it kind of pisses me off. Like Mortal Kombat, when you buy the season pass for them, or even like their newest like forty dollar pass that had like all the extra in-game content and stuff, they had the audacity to charge you like for extra costumes outside of the season pass, which I thought was ridiculous. Because if it comes out within that season of DLC, it should be included. But um, that's my thoughts on that. And um, feeling a complete gate, wanting there to be more modes, I I'm not sure. Those were mainly rumors. If I didn't cover it on my channel, it pretty much means that like it wasn't anything to come into fruition. But when it comes to modes, Libra of Soul is actually probably the best single player mode we've had outside of Chronicles of the Sword from Soul Calibur 3. Um, minus something like an endless battle mode or like a tower mode like we had from 4 or 5. Um, 
I could see those getting added in at some point. I would like to have them for longevity of the single player experience. But I think this one overall is a pretty jam-packed game compared to like the last previous installments. Um, especially some of the older ones and the recent uh, 4 and 5 were pretty stripped, in my opinion. Ashton Bird says, I think the pieces were alright though. I think they could have been a bit better. Hopefully the next DLC pieces should be better, and I agree with your thoughts on the new pieces. The next pieces should include another hairstyle for both males and females, another voice for both males and females, because I like how they added that in the last DLC set. Personally, they did a bit better on the pieces in the season pass 1 than they did in 2, but that's just me. When we get Huang, uh, they could give us another hairstyle, maybe a classic outfit for him if there is one. Maybe give us a bit more classic outfits and pieces for Soul Calibur 5 that we didn't get yet. Also more pieces for other races and more options for them. I mean, I'm always down for more stuff, obviously. Oh, I just wanted to let you guys know, I see a lot of people saying Huang, but then they also refer to um, Yoon Song as just Yoon Song. Uh, Yoon Song's family name is Hong, so if you're gonna say Huang, then you should say Hong for Yoon Song, because Huang's name is not actually Huang, that's his last name. His, his uh, actual name is Song Gyeong, so it would be Song Gyeong and Yoon Song, just putting that out there. Sawada so Gili says, I would love if they had at least one of Elisa's hairstyles from the Tekken set, because the hairstyle I used to make her is just not that good in my opinion, and yes, I'm an Elisa main, laugh out loud. I love Elisa as well, so that's fine. And like I said, I would have also wanted Jane or Kazuya hair and parts. And then I got a retort from, honestly, the same. I would love to have a Xiaoyu costume like in Soul Calibur V because there's not much clothing that matches Xiaoyu, unfortunately. And I said, you're right, because the Chinese key pal in this game is pretty generic. Um, I somewhat, I don't really walk that back, but like you can add on to the key pal by like giving it textures and patterns and stuff. So you can make it how you want it. I guess I can understand why they just made it a blank slate because it would be annoying if there was patterns on there that you couldn't change because maybe it wouldn't fit for certain characters. But um, I would like a different variety of more uh, Asian aesthetic style clothes in the game. Jesse mb 27 says, I like it when characters in fighting game series get to make a return after a long absence. Considering that Huang hasn't been in a game since Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition released back in 2006, coincidentally the last time that Fujin, who plenty of folks in the comment section have also brought up, was in Mortal Kombat Armageddon until he finally returned an aftermath update of Mortal Kombat 11 in 2020. Hmm, another amusing coincidence. It is long overdue for him to return. Uh, it is overdue. I'm not sure if it's a coincidence, more of that they want to have all the Soul Edge legacy characters in this reboot because it's a reboot, <laughs> so it wouldn't be a good idea to disclude anyone that was from the original games because um, it's pretty much takes place after Soul Edge, talks about the, the things that happen in Soul Edge, and then it covers Soul Calibur 1 and 2, and um, becomes a new timeline. Michael Garcia says, Huang is my favorite in Soul Calibur 3 and Soul Blade. We need more OG characters, and I hope in Soul Calibur 7, if there is one, that we get tag team back. Uh, I want to see Ta Toki as a playable character, the Masty of Taki, and hey, maybe we will see Lee Long back. I like him better than Maxi because he looks more like Bruce Lee and has a more interesting story. I even like drawing Lee Long more than uh, I draw any other character. Um, I mean, I can see that, but if they did bring Lee Long back at some point, I think they would have to overhaul his moveset and design. Uh, it's pretty generic and it happens a lot when like every fighting game has their like quote unquote Bruce, Bruce Lee clone. And Maxi, to a point, is even that, so they just, like, moved all the, everything over to him. Similarly, uh, not completely different from what they did earlier with uh, Song Young kind of writing him out and moving him into uh, Yoon Song, but now that they're both coming back, supposedly, and going to be in the same game, hopefully there's chance for other characters. I really want to see the bonus characters come back as well. Uh, I know a lot of people like uh, Ashlod and Kamakiri Musi. My favorite was Shura. I just really wish that we can get some of those back. David King says, Super hyped for Huang. After Amy, I think he was my most wanted character. Same dude, I really want him back. He's my favorite character outside of the book. I think Shura is my favorite character overall from the entire Soul Calibur franchise, but then it would definitely, if we're talking main cast, it would definitely be Huang. Ragarel says, Huang to me is basically the Fujin of Soul Calibur. Hardcore fans really want him back, and the casual or newer audience is kind of apathetic to him. While the developers have taken their sweet time bringing him back, laugh out loud. I'm honestly not sure why I like him though. He easily is one of the, my favorite of the Asian region characters if we're not counting Shura. 
Yeah, like I said, if we're not counting the bonus characters, because Shura is my absolute favorite, but um, if we are counting them, then it goes to Shura. If not, then it goes to Huang. Thaddeus Horn says, Hey Mark, I hope you're doing well. Huang is my favorite regular quote-unquote character, so I like, like yourself, I'm happy that he's coming back. Heck, with the creation parts, maybe we can finally get some fingerless gloves, also known as the rocker gloves, back, since his shirtless alternate in Soul Calibur 1 had them. Well, kind of. They were bandaged fingerless gloves, but you know what I mean. This also, my book, would be a good time to maybe revamp the creation parts with a heavy male focus. Bring uh, back to Huang, though, and we've talked about it before, is that I'm so amazed that so many people got hooked onto Yun Song and thought that he was quote-unquote better than Huang. His story is basically Huang's with a hip twist. He idolized Huang, then hears about a, the Sword of Salvation, and wants to get back to being a hero for his people. However, in all of his endings, until Soul Calibur 4, kind of, he finds out that everyone is saying is true and goes home empty-handed, or some variation of this. To me, he seemed to have no character growth, because despite everyone telling him about his true nature of Soul Edge, he would do the exact same thing in every game. Basically, a more anime version of Huang, mimicking his outfit to some degree, but having Edge and most probably this pick, I always want to come back to when thinking about it, and then he shared a picture. Huang I always liked, as he started out kind of as the Ryu to Mitsurugi's Ken, but never achieved his goal. He lost focus after he returns from Soul Edge Quest, finding out his true nature, and it ends up costing him some of his crew. When he gets this new mission to find and eventually rescue Song Mina, it shows his growth because he learned how to stay true to himself, being a more cerebral fighter and, and not a hothead. And comes to the realization that he doesn't need a weapon like Soul Edge to defend his country, only using his skills and his self-belief in himself. If anything, it would have been an ally to the crew, quote unquote, of uh, Shanghua, Maxi, and Keely, helped destroy Soul Edge because of his knowledge of the sword's true nature and not wanting it to get into the wrong hands. Of course, that would probably would have gotten Nyx due to his similarity to Shang Wa's style. His style isn't that much like Shang Wa's, like I went over. If you go back and you play the Order games, with the exception of maybe... No, even three, you get the Soul, soul of Huang, and it's like his old style. He's got moves that are a mixture of Mitsurugi's and Shang Wa's, like, together. And then he's also got a bunch of uh, Taekyeon kicks which is obviously the precursor to Taekwondo. So it's similar to how you would see Bakdo-san from uh, Tekken or Huarong um, using their kick style moves. It, it, I actually really liked his moves a lot. I think it's one of my favorites in the game. Terrence Sproul says, Huang is just like Fujin in Mortal Kombat. He was supposed to be in previous Mortal Kombat games, but never made it until Mortal Kombat 11, and now he's a beast. Will it be the same for Huang? Keep up the good work, G. Uh, thank you for that comment, and as always, of course, like a lot of people keep mentioning the similarities between him and Fujin. I'm not sure if it's so much of a similarity between the characteristics or just that they're classic characters that are finally getting the resurgence back, which is not only expected, but I like it. Solar for 95 says, I'm going to be real here. I never really cared about him and would often forget he even existed. In fact, my reaction whenever someone brought it up was, quote-unquote, this guy has fans? All that being said, though, seeing your, as well as several others, enthusiasm for a character has actually gotten me interested in the character, and I look forward to seeing what they do with him in the new timeline. Well, if you like some of my other characters that, like, uh, I'm a fan of, then you'll definitely be down for him. Um, I mean, when push comes to sub, you're gonna see, it's all about, like, the style and, like, how we play with each character. I know a lot of people can't really handle Setsuka's style because it's a lot of short-range burst combos that are mixed in with uh, parries that turn into counters, so a lot of people don't really get the technical side of those characters, and I'm not saying that I 100% do either, so I'm in the same boat. Um, it comes down to whoever you feel the most comfortable playing with, and to me it's like who you play with the longest because you kind of memorize their moves after a certain extent. Um, I think you'll like Long though. Kitty Meals or Gaming says, Yeah, I'd like to see a more romantic relationship blossom between Sung Mina and Sung Gyeong. Even in the past, I was disappointed that they had more of a brother-sister relationship, and in my opinion it makes more sense for them to be lovers rather than siblings. And I think your hunch might be right that they take a different approach with them as characters moving forward. Like with how Sung Mina is Soul Chronicle, when it shows uh, Sung Young holding her, she's blushing, which is your thumbnail picture. I mean, he's a pretty schmexy man, so I don't blame Mina, haha. <laughs> but <laughs> what was that robotic haha, <laughs> so I was like, haha. <laughs> my bad. But I'm probably biased because uh, Sung Mina and Sung Young have been my favorite since the beginning. Obviously, I agree. I like them both. Uh, 
And then she goes on to also comment, Huang fans unite. Uh, laugh out loud. He's definitely one of my favorite male characters out of the franchise. It was so much fun using his throw kick to ring people out from in Soul Blade and Soul Edge. Yeah, I love that throw kick as well, and I can't wait to have that back. It's really nice to combo into, too. Um, sorry, when I'm reading these, sometimes I'm just reading them, like, uh, point blank, and it's really hard to, I guess, uh, get into the emotions of it. Like, I do when I actually re initially respond to the comments, but when I'm reading them back, it's kind of hard. I don't want to, like, fake it, so... Um, if I say, like, haha, <laughs> I guess that is, like, an indication of the other person laughing instead of myself. Antoine Hampton says, Thanks for the great video. It's been a long journey. I'm one of those OG Soul Blade slash Soul Edge fans, Huang fans, and I'm super anxious to have him playable again. To see him basically replaced with Yoon Song devastated me. I could never get into the character. I'm hoping Project Soul can shed the, the clone character quote-unquote stigma that Huang has and put a lot of love into him like they have done with the rest of the DLC characters. With his inclusion, I'm sure Sung Young will gain a lot of new fans. Uh, Postscript, I wonder if they will officially connect the Assassin character to him. Um, I don't think they will. I think that we might get an alternate color for his two-player costume for the Assassin clothes, and if we get anything uh, best, I think that maybe we'll get the Assassin clothes parts in um, the Creative Soul parts. Silver Strings Gia says, it's so refreshing to see cutscenes in a Soul Calibur game, and those weapon exhibitions were so cool. Uh, meaning, during my Huang video, I showed um, the Yun Song versus Huang Soul Edge battle, and uh, the weapon exhibition for uh, Huang Song Young. And yeah, I agree. I also, I've always wanted them to kind of give a little take, like maybe do like uh, anime um, cutscenes. I think at certain parts in the game, that would just be really awesome. You don't have to like fill the whole game with them, because it takes a lot of like work and money to do that. But it'll be nice if we got like an animated intro maybe, um, and like an ending to certain things like maybe uh, character arcade endings or um, the end of a, the story mode, something like that. Sean underscore image says, although there is a real source, although there is now real source or proof, I feel that he is one of the assassins in Soul Calibur 2. Assassin had Huang's moveset and had the letter H on his belt. Also, in Soul Calibur 6, there's a scene where Sung Mina's story mode where she is wearing, where he is wearing the assassin costume, or maybe it's just an Easter egg or not to Soul Calibur 2. Either way, Sung Young deserves a return since he's one of the last two characters from Soul Blade to return, and the first to prematurely written out of the story when, for the most part. Hopefully the leaks are true and he returns sometime in October or November. Um, the leaks uh, may or may not be true, but... I think I pretty much have it right on the money because I've actually looked at the data. But I mean, that's up for you guys to decide whether you believe me or not, but I haven't really been wrong yet. Um, again, I don't want to toot my own horn. That sounds kind of arrogant to say it like that, and I kind of want to walk that back, but it's kind of a true statement. So uh, I put a lot of work into this series, and I do a lot of uh, research when I'm trying to come up with this information for you guys, and I hope that you guys appreciate all the work. <laughs> like, I appreciate you watching, though. And then we have my pinned comment from Daniel Ramsey from my Is Soul Calibur 2 anime-like video from, I believe it was two days ago. Maybe yesterday. The art style from Soul Edge onto Soul Calibur hasn't really declined. Yet from an in in-game visual design, the Soul Calibur game has changed during Soul Calibur 2 through Soul Calibur 4. As the characters' nationalities were either being influenced by their art designs or the characters' real-world nationalities and the traits associated. If we're defining this game by art style alone, then yes, manga and anime influence the series from a major standpoint. In fact, if people though the series, if people think that the series is silly now, it could have easily been more silly if the developers went into a chainsaw wielding fighter and Soul Edge. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Historically, historical accuracy always played second fiddle to the story and characters, and honestly, I find that to be the most interesting part about these games. Uh, I I agree to that point. Um, I don't really need it to be super historically accurate. I would like it to be somewhat accurate, though. Like, I've made mention that video I did about the Korean representation in the game, because there's nothing about those characters that is, like, Korean at all outside of, like, their names. Uh, their clothes are not Korean, their hairstyle is not Korean, even their colors and features. Like, it's all pretty fantasy-esque to me. That's why it's, like, it goes bigger into the, the thing that it's basically an anime game, which there's nothing wrong with. I thoroughly enjoy the, the whole series. It's my favorite fighting game set franchise. East Sparta says, I mean, I don't hate that it's influenced or got influenced by anime because I love that kind of stuff. 
But for those who don't like Soul Calibur 6 or nitpick about the game is lacking in or just hate anything anime related, do not realize that Soul Calibur 6 is partially Japanese. Actually, it's fully Japanese. It's not. It's made completely in Japan by band by uh, Project Soul and uh, produced by Bandai Namco. There's it, there's nothing American about it except for like the English voiceover cast and stuff like that and the localization cast. Um, just like Tekken is. Anyhow, you cleared most of that up, and I was gonna say nice. Uh, by the way, you say grow sounds like grow, quote unquote, as the way I say it, grow's name is like grow. Uh, yeah, I just say it the way the announcer says it, and he says grow, so I just say grow. <laughs> Hill Skills 1 says, it has the best fluid mechanics, and he goes on to say, I love it whether it's anime or not, and I'm inclined to agree. David King says, mm, probably, to be honest, I have no problem with it in any way. Virgil Wright 70 says, but isn't Soul Calibur a franchise made by a Japanese company? I mean, it makes sense that there are some anime aspects. I completely agree, Virgil. Uh, AKS Gazi says, haven't watched the video yet, though my answer is yes, even though it's not a bad thing. And uh, you're correct, it's not a bad thing. Bob, uh, me, Lopolis says, Soul Calibur has been an anime like since Soul Blade, which is the first game. Sophitia is Jane DR, Japan style. Siegfried is Guts Griffith and comes with his own Casca. Taki is 90s Konoichi trope. Voldo is Jojo S character, etc. I completely agree. They're all Japanese created characters, so of course it would be anime esque. E Daddy says, Exactly, and by the way, I prefer this intro. Well, thank you, I worked hard on it. Yeah, Soul Calibur has always been an anime-esque, and ask the YouTuber Kabash, good YouTube, to be honest though, uh, I don't, I'm not really familiar with him, so I can't really speak either way to it, uh, said in his videos of Soul Calibur, and I quote, it's too anime-ish, and I went on to complain that clearly bonus anime characters from, I think, Soul Calibur 4, Ashlot or whatever she's called, you know the one, and the other one, to me, however, Soul Calibur is tame, just like, well, first of all, I want to stop right there, it's not even just <laughs> Ashlot. Soul Calibur 3 had, like, completely custom parts for Xenosaga characters, which is straight up an anime-based, like, RPG game. Um, not only that, but then, like, you have Link, who's pretty much Japanese-created. I don't know, like, I don't see, like, the whole problem with, like, what some people have with it. I know a lot of my subscribers don't care either way, but the whole argument that, like, they're just gonna throw the game away because it's, like, too anime is kind of stupid and redundant to me. It's, it's reductive, too, because it, it just means that, like, you didn't give it the proper chance that it had. I could say those same things about, like, literally any game or any genre. All promotional art and concept art both look like anime. It's in the realm of it isn't at the same time. It's kind of a perfect blend. Like when Kratos and Spawn were in, it didn't feel like an anime, just a fighting game. Yet a lot of the story has anime tropes, and that's okay, too. My determining factor is my casual dad's opinion. He thinks it's high fantasy in a realistic setting. He saw a samurai versus a blonde knight, not anime. Well, I mean, I would argue against that because there's a lot of anime that have that kind of, like, depictions in there. Like, whether you're talking about, um, um, Seven Deadly Sins or Berserk or, uh, Jane D'Arc. There, there's a ton of stuff that is, like, medieval stuff like that with the exact same kind of, uh, tropes going on. But I see what they're saying. So it's like it is and it isn't, but it's not 100% either because I wouldn't call Link debatable or Spawn as anime. Well, all anime, like I said in my video depiction is, it's literally just the word that means animation. It's just animation that comes from Japan. So Spawn had an animated series. He's from a comic book, so Spawn would be considered anime too, just American animation. Uh, same thing with Link, uh, but he's from Japan, so he's even more so anime. So, I mean, it's, we can get muddled up in semantics and, like, talk about the actual definitions of these things, but I think it's important to note that, like, whether someone colloquially means something and it's factually different, I think it's important to point that out just so they don't make mistakes in the future. When clearly one is a video game elf and the other one is an American comical character. Yeah, I, I don't... There's no distinction to me. Like, manga just is the Japanese word for comic. And anime is the colloquial term we gave for Japanese animation. Like I said in the 90s, we used to call it Japanime. Um, it's not like, it's no different from anything else. So if you're going to say that, like, that this game is anime, then, like, maybe you are going to, like, not like Spider-Man either, because you're going to think that's too anime. And if you're talking about, like, the character designs, like, large eyes and stuff, that's all cultural influ influence. It has nothing to do with, like, uh, specific things. And there's uh, tons of anime that actually don't do those tropes. So even just lumping anime into a giant category is kind of stupid to me, in my opinion. I don't know. Fighting games are in a universe of their own regardless. 
Like, what is Mortal Kombat 2 movie esque for me? Uh, well, yeah, so like he goes on to talk about Kabashi again, and it's similar. I will talk to you guys later. And as always, thank you. And thank you. Hey, what's up, guys? Have you always wanted some sweet Mark Yoon merch? Maybe a Thick You shirt, maybe a shirt from Squirt, maybe my pretty face with my logo all over your body, or a throw pillow, or blanket, or anything? Well, you're in luck, because I just launched my merch store, and it is going to be available on Redbubble, and you will find a link to it in my description box down below. It's got a lot of quality content, and a lot of good stuff for you to pick up, so you can show your support for the channel, and just rep Mark Yoon. Alright, guys, as always.